This tape has been produced especially for Telical Plains Homecoming 86 by Charles Hall from 8mm home movies filmed by the late Percy Swainson between 1935 and the early 1950s. We're grateful to Lula and to the Swainson family for the use of these films. I will attempt to identify those persons and events shown and regret any mistakes. This is believed to be Roy Payne, Coker Creek. And this this is Maple Stratton Rafter. She was a teacher in the high school in Teleco. And John Murphy from Coker Creek. This gentleman appears to be uh, Charlie Wayman, but we can't be sure. There's John Murphy and Maple again. No question, Joel Irons. It was downtown Teleco about 1935. Good view there, Ms. Duval's restaurant. This is one of the share girls, probably Pauline. S.A. Bright, Sam Bright the Bright brothers who were early business people in Teleco Plains, influential in the railroad. E.E. Uh, e. Hall, local groceryman, one-time mayor of Teleco Plains. John Kilpatrick, Kilpatrick grocer and a farmer. Charlie Dunn, a farmer and later a butcher in Teleco Plains. Chuck Williams on the right, and one of the Newman twins. This lady we don't know. Stokely food supervisor for many years, Pat Irons. Pat's son, Jodine Irons. Madalou Hawkins. And Dr. Cher. Leonard Walker with a good view of the old company store. And Roy Walker. Bertha Hawkins. Mary Neal Bryan. Woodrow Hooper. That's Charles Swainson and Percy. Those are not 1935 pictures, they're later. We just stuck them in to get a quick picture of Percy in the group. Some of Percy's family here. Mr. Moles, don't know that one. This is Aunt Hamilton. Burl Patterson. Of course, Carolyn and Mary Heather and Percy's ever-present 5121 license tag. High school football, Teleco and someone, we don't know who. Earl Callhorn. Harold Hawkins. Malcolm Williams, Buck Hunt, and Chippy Styles, and then back to football.
two local teachers uh, here for a short time. They room with Esteline Williamson. The one on the right is a Sharp from Von Orr and a Marshall on the left from Knoxville. This is some of Percy's family, but we were unable to identify them. Zach Ellis, Coker Creek. And this is Preacher John Ellis, Coker Creek, uh, the father of Zach, Zeke, and Ben Ellis. These two young men we've never identified. This is believed to be Ben Ellis on Coker Creek. The old company store, after Babcock left in the middle 20s, it became Lee Hardware Company. It was remodeled uh, with the windows across the front there. And uh, finally was demolished in the summer of 1937. That's our first look at Coach Hunt, Friar Hunt, the one with a hat. We believe this is Dewey Hooper on the left and either Reed Talent or Roy Yater on the right. Uh, we have mixed feelings there. Gold Millsaps, operator of a local restaurant and an ardent squirrel hunter. This is either a CC or a CCC or a WPA job. And of course the rooster fight, and that's for real. Percy slipped in and slipped out by promising them not to show their faces. This field and school is, has been identified as Polk County, so this would be Delco Plains and Polk County.
Mr. J.D. Humphreys is the local principal for several years. J.D. Humphreys and Coach Pryor Hunt. Uh, you see the Barry House in the background. Ray McJunkins kicking. The know that left footer. And this is Tip Gray. Howard Lester. Now Tom Lester. And Ben Ellis. Edward Holder. And Chippy Styles, Percy Swainson, and the local gang on the S Hunt Hill. If you remember, when you went under the fence, you crossed 68 Highway and went on down Babcock Street. If you were successful in getting under the fence and across the road. This to be Whit Taylor from Coker Creek. And this was either Clyde or Oldie Gardner uh, here at Teleco. Bill Hunt on the right and Edward Holder on the left. That was Hunky and Wimpy. Another shot of Ben Ellis. <laughs> Dr. Sher on the left, Fred Hawkins on the right. C.B. Hawkins now resides in Sweetwater. And Paul Patterson now living in Von Orr. That's L.J. Shields at bat. That was Gil Hunt who fielded that one through the first. Charles Hall who walked in the screen there. Marvin Hall, who caught that one. feel like this is Harold Cope.
That's Gail Hunt, pitching, Guilford Hunt, pitching. Clyde Pierce, the local buyer of pulpwood, acid wood. Mr. Moles and Jess Brooks in the doorway with Clyde Pierce on the left. Johnny Walker and Pryor Hunt. Joe Klein on the left, Johnny Walker with the fish, and J.D. Humphrey, and Buck Hunt, and Percy Swainson, Boyd Ferguson. And Fire Hunt. This is Gina Cole with the buildings in the back being built in late 37, early 38. Uh, Margaret Hunt. No identification on this one. Nor this one. Mr. M.C. Miller, he is a new depot agent. Gil Hunt or Guilford Hunt. The 
This is groundbreaking in late 1937. This particular location is where the old high school gym stood, the old frame gym. The uh, school itself, grammar school and high school, is still in the background there to be torn down very shortly. This was the official groundbreaking ceremony. There's Dr. Scher, Plossy Gardner, Mr. Hamlow. That's Flossy with the show. Ms. Hambo and Cher. PC Hambo. I believe the lady on the right is Fanoe Bates. Slick Lance, Little Slick. Johnny McJunkins Jr. Johnny Mac. Charles Lee Froggy. Bernard Hicks. Kenneth Saunders. And Harold Cope. These pictures would have been in the early 40s. Corbin Tucker. The Corbin said this was about 44. Walter Hunt, uh, former mayor of Teleco Plains. Pat Jenkins. And Charles Swainson. He's older here than he will be in some of the later birthday parties simply because the film were transferred just as they came out of the bag. There was no time to sort out. It's Mary Heather enjoying the cake. And Carolyn. Mary Nancy Holiday. Charles Swainson, Jim Watkins, and Jim Ware. Charles J. Lee, now in Madisonville. Guilford Hunt, uh, now living in Knoxville. We are not sure, believe it to be Ray McClellan. Tip Gray, no question. Not sure, but we believe this is Biz Jenkins, the mother of Ray Jenkins and Gertrude Coe. Roy Yater, the plant manager at Stokely's and a former mayor of Teleco Plains. Mr. P.C. Hambo, who was the farm boss for many, many years. Another shot of Corbin Tucker. 
Bill Gray. And Harold Carringer. And Johnny Lance. Bill Hunt. We believe the lady on the right to be Helen Rogers and the one on the left to be Gladys Hamilton. No one has so far identified this man. William Boring. Bill Cobb. You see the old Methodist church in the background. And Bill is a former mayor of Teleco Plains. This is probably Boots Stoner, who did barnstorming throughout this area. Rachel Stevens. And Bill Hunt again. Mr. Charlie Hawkins, that's Harold and Harry's father. Mr. Will Standridge, who was the local laundry dry cleaner man. And Mr. Charlie again. The town square in 1938, mud holes and all. Gus Hunt on the left and Andy Hunt, Pryor's father on the right. James Holt, Vernell Wayman, Vernell Wayman Fritz, Eva Williams, and Ms. Cher, Ms. Dr. Cher, Harry Hawkins. Reed Humphreys on the left, and many of us believe that we will just not name the one on the right. There's some dispute on that. Charlie Blair and Frank Dye. Dick Linton, a Masonic official from Nashville who visited Percy quite often. Giles, we believe. Of course, no question, Mr. George Talent. This is a hazy view from Buckball Lookout. That head you see bobbing there is none other than Joe Floyd. That's Aunt Cindy Melton, Rough Ridge Creek, wife of Joe Melton. And 
it's Percy Swainson, and I believe it's Carolyn. Mary Heather and Charles. This hog still holds the record of being the largest to ever come out of the Cherokee National Forest, or probably any of the other forests around. It's Irvin Weiss on the left and Bill Duncan, the right, or right in the center there, who was the ranger. Lula and one of the little ones. A cousin of Percy's, I believe she was a cowhorn. We believe this to be Dr. Hammond. I guess this is Charles, since it was as far back as it is. This is Alls Aikens. Bill Cobb, the former mayor of Teleco Plains. And that's Mark Hunt holding the hog's ears. There is Grover Fry and May Shaw. This is Dave Bride. His brother Sam was on earlier. And this is Cyrus Harris. He was a practicing attorney in Telegraph Plains at that time.
Charles Lee and Junior Dunn. Ott Holcomb. Ed Niles, Bill Hunt again, there's Pop Muns and his dog. This is James Hooper. J.O. Wilson, Odell on the right. Chippy Styles. Clarence Powers. He would be walking there out in front of his grocery store. Ray Dumfries. There's a good view of one of the old company store. And Mr. Charlie Hawkins again in front of Ms. Duval's restaurant. Harold Cope. Ben Stevens. It's Birch Coppinger. Downtown Teleco. Dr. Scher. Harry Hawkins. Fred Hawkins, the postmaster at, at this time. Free Barnard, a local barber. A boy talent. The Woodrow Hooper. Dr. Scher again. Prudy Cawhorn. Lawrence Ray. Notice the wagon, the mule tied up on the left there. That's for real. That was someone's means of transportation. Of course, that's our gang, the same crowd that played all over town all the time. Billy Stiles. Dr. Rogers. Uh, Dr. Rogers was the mayor of Teleco at one time. And Fred Lee Jr. or June Lee. Various names have been suggested here. Uh, the most popular one being Malden Lee, since this is his wife, Laura Lee, this next. John Dick Berger. Homer Bryson. It's just a snowy day in Teleco Plains. You can see the old Watson store in the background there. And Lula coming to work in the snow. There's old Chippy in the snow, too. Mr. P. 
SBC handball. And another try at the S on the hill. Down into 68 Highway and down Babcock Street. is at Bill Fry's. Just in between where uh, Ed and John now live. There's Mr. Bill. That one's Ed, Ed Fry. No question, this is Mr. Sam Kidd, Spanish-American War veteran, and Colonel Hofford, one of the developers of this area, and Flossie Gardner, when she first became postmaster. Ms. Tyler Tritt. And this is Tyler Tritt. He was the railway agent at this time. Barry. M.C. Miller. And Sue Lee. Archie Kelly. Coker Creek. Gertrude Carringer, Gertrude Linderman Carringer. Beatrice Dye. And Joe Wilson. Shot of Joe Floyd on the beach in California. A real tough time finding anything to run of Joe. Of course, Charles Swainson's graduating class uh, among all of there's numerous ones there that we could identify. Mike Stratton, Joe Stratton, oh, uh, Madeleine and Chumney. Uh, there's numerous teleco kids. All right, these are later pictures that Percy had made uh, about 1951. There's Aline Gray. Margaret Davis there. Don and Marilyn Lance. 
Don Lance and Marilyn Lance. Charlotte Stevens, Benita Irvin, Paula Stratton, and Mary Heather Swainson. That's Carolyn Swainson and Billy Hall. Mary Heather again. This is the Frank Gray family. It was Frank's father and mother there. And this is a family reunion. There's Sheriff Burris, Lloyd Burris, in the town square, Arnold Johnson on the right. This is a Tom Wilson. There's Fred Payne with a white shirt and tie. Norman Lee, Joe Floyd, Joe again. <laughs> Carolyn Weiss with Lucy Gray. Madeline with Lucy. And June Plemons coming up the hill to see Lucy. Birthday party for Prissy Hall. There the cowgirl. It's Kay Holt with her there. There's Joe Holt and Madeline Weiss and just about all the kids around town on the hill. That's the Lester family from Dallas, Texas, out for a leisure ride in Teleco Plains. Roma Lester. Mother of Carl Jr., Billy Hall. This is groundbreaking for Colonial Corporation. Uh, the plant here in Teleco is, is Charles Hall trying to get the blade in the ground there. is Mary Catherine Hooper and Larry Moses with the Hall twins as mascots. That's bean picking at Stokely's. Two gentlemen are John Patterson there and Mr. Hambo. Shaw picking up fox that had been killed some way or other. Ted Fry is Charlie Jenkins. These fellows are stocking trout fish in Green Cove Lake. It's James Hooper coming up the hill, I believe. A local bear hunt. See Ray Fry, Alice Aikens, uh, John Beware. Grover Fry, Reese Britton, 
Harold Rice. Pretty nice bear. James Hooper, Jimmy and Mary Catherine with the pups. Frank Holliday and his family at the falls. It's Earl Taylor on the right, a county deputy who was killed in the line of duty in Coke Creek. Richard Lynn looking out through the window at Hooper's garage. Mark Hunt, the mechanic at Hooper's Garage. John B. Ware, the policeman with Mark. The following wagon train movie is furnished by Ed Fry, Ray Fry. Frank Gray, Jimmy Moore, Jimmy Hooper, and Charles Hall. They are not in sequence. Uh, just as the films were received, they were transferred to video. So the oldest train will not be first. Uh, that was Danny Rice that just went by. James. And that's Jimmy Hooper and Ed Pryor. That would have been the second wagon train, 1959. Danny Williamson, Monroe County Highway Department. Also 1959 train. Ted Hamblin. This is uh, on our arrival in Murphy. On July the 4th, 1959. These particular pictures here are on the return trip that's coming down by Bass Dockery's on the way home. There's the Charles Halls in a Surrey in 1959, parading through Murphy. This was also 1959, the helicopter landing in the town square. These pictures shot from the helicopter. Trooper walking away there, it was a pilot. It was Charles Hall walking off. There's Brian and Stephen Talent at the helicopter. Of course, Bertha Hawkins, they're in the crowd. Jim Millsaps, Babe Hunt, Harold, Hall, Harold Carringer. It was Freck Hunt that just rode by in the car. This is seen looking at the train as it crosses Stokely Bottom. Uh, for the parade. This is Ruth Gray and Rosemary Britton. There's Billy Hall, Reese Britton, Pam and Pat, Peggy and Prissy Hall. This Claude Angel from Andrews, it was Buck Fisher from Andrews. <laughs> Captain Frank Swan with a spotted horse, and of course, Nail Fry. These guys, I can't see their face well enough to identify. Ruth and Rosie again. All right, this is the 59 parade in downtown Teleco. There's Granny Millsaps.
It's Frank Holliday and Sammy. Barry Talent and Don Hamilton. Carson and Ted Hamilton. There's Frank Holiday and Sammy again. This is back in town for the beauty contest. Take a look at that gas price there, 29.9. This is Tom Wilson in the town square. This is Ms. Hunt, Ruth Hunt's mother. Starting on the left is Captain Swan and Charles Hall, Ted Hamilton, and Ed Pry. Talent again, respreading with the Siri. Captain's uh, Cloud Angel again. Back downtown Teleco. This is the parade coming down by the Methodist Church. Jimmy Hooper. Good looking horse, Charles Hall and Robin. John Fry and Marguerite. It was Birch Coppinger. I believe that's Peggy Hall and Jimmy Hooper there. No, it couldn't be Jimmy because here comes Jimmy on a horse. the halls and parade in Murphy. Ted Hamilton and Ruth. Of course, 
Because there's Ed and Ted uh, playing with a little hack. There's Peggy Hall driving with Prissy and Pam and Pat. Charles and Billy Hall and the girls uh, with Reese Britton sitting in the Surrey. Ed Fry leading the parade. Now this is Passing One's Hotel. Ted Hamilton and Shag Hudson, Shag from Greenback. Don Walker riding old Buckwheat. Charles Hall on Robin. There's David Clemmer. Tom Hamilton with a brief glimpse of Claude Bale. There's Kenny Hamilton riding off. Claude Bale is back to you and uh, Barry Talent. That's Leo Phillips Jr., I believe. Ron Carden, whoopity. Howard Bale. You see R.B. Hamilton in the background there. This is 1958, Preacher Talent, looking out at the wagon in the old time Parsons suit, and Vanderford, Preacher Vanderford. There's Harold Hawkins with Ed Fry walking up. This is Danny Fry. Uh, it's Mark Jenkins and Laura Watson, the two in the center. Richard Talent in the front wagon, Vanderford in the next. This is crossing the town square in Teleco. Parading Teleco planes. There's Grover Fry on the left and Captain Swan on the right, leading the train, the parade through town. Ed Fry driving the lead wagon there. A local group of walkers, marchers. It's Bob Carson. This is along Teleco River near Teleco Beach. That's Vanderford pulling out. Some of these are several tapes from the same wagon train, but made by different people. 
this particular one was made just previous to the square dance in 1958. The Estes Kefal for uh, in attendance. There's his back, with his back toward us, Mr. W. Michael on the platform. There's Estes turning to walk off. Sam, Sam Williams, the bathing beauties we haven't identified. Now this one switches to Murphy upon our arrival on the first wagon train in Murphy. This is the parade with Grover Fry out front, Ed Fry driving the front wagon. There's Charles Hall and Ted Hamilton, Cutworm, Clyde Beavers who rode that donkey all the way across. Harold Rice, Frank Holliday. Jimmy Hooper, this was wagon train number one arriving in Murphy on July the 4th, 1958. We have finished our 29th trip this past year. Uh, next year, 19 and 87 will be coming into Teleco Plains for our 30th anniversary trip. And again, we will square dance and arrive in Murphy on July the 4th, 1987. This is crossing Teleco River on the return trip from Murphy in 58. This would be the 10th anniversary trip here I believe which would be 1967. No, I stand corrected on that one. That's still the, uh, about a 60, 1960 trip. Ed Fry and Captain Swan, that would have been in 1960. Now we're into the 67 trip. There's John Fry and Reese Britton. The two on that horse riding double were the Hall twins, Pam and Pat. Slick Hauser from Sweetwater. There's Ed Fry and the flag bearers up front. Carrying an American flag would be Mike Long, and the uh, Tennessee flag, uh, J.O. Dodson. There's a good shot of Ed, Mike, and J.O., but I don't get a shot of the North Carolina flag to tell who. There's Casey Pentecost, Hammond Fowler, and Z.D. Atkins, uh, Billy Hall, the twins in the background. This is all the 67 trip.
following tape was made by Ken Matthews during homecoming 86 activities. Uh, made there in the community center. Uh, many of you will see yourself or your friends there. The song, A Place Called Tennessee, was written by Shirley Gilley of Teleco Plains uh, with the music by Bill Stonecipher of Knoxville.
The buffalo shown there were brought into Hooper's Ball at the same time the wild hog was brought, along with uh, elk. Uh, the wealthy Englishman who uh, set the lodge up uh, uh, had visions of bringing his friends there to hunt. Of course, the hog escaped and populated the forest uh, with the wild Russian hog, as we now know it. The buffalo were later sold, and the elk uh, disappeared. There's Tom Lester from Dallas, and Norman Boring in the background, Madisonville. Prissy Hall Dockery. You can see Ray McJunkins back there. Uh, there's Lou McJunkins, Norm Lou Byram. Uh, you can see Aline from Dallas sitting there. This is the group watching the movies of the old timers. Lena Holt. And Ida Lester sitting with Lena. <clears throat> That's just a view of the front exhibition hall. There's one of the hall twins. That's a few of the telephones that were in service. Uh, in Teleco Plains up to uh, the fall of 1956 when they were switched out for uh, uh, the modern dial telephone. The hooks on the left there, the climbers, were used to build the first telephone system into the Teleco Plains area. There's Pam Hall Matthews in the center of the picture. Junebug and Prissy. Dockery. And Peggy Wall. Sanderson Kirkland with the glasses. Just 
just a part of an ever-changing crowd of people who sit and watch the movies. Uh, those of you who were there, uh, remember. It was Pam Hall with Dorothy Hall. That's Pam Hall Matthews with Dorothy Payne Hall. This is a 1918 Fairbanks Morris one lunger engine uh, pulling the grist mill. The old grist mill came off of Steer Creek here near Teleco Plains.
That's Ray McJunkin and Howard Lester, Tom Lester, Ed Davis. Junkins. Of course, you've seen this before in the old movies. Nemesu Lynn, Nemesu Byron Lynn, who uh, did so much uh, narrating for us. This exhibit was furnished by the State of Tennessee Department of Conservation. Local archaeologist Joe Benthal uh, prepared it.
And there's yours truly. It was nice having each of you visit Teleco Plains. Your presence here made homecoming a success, a complete success. There's Harold Carringer, Dave Gray on the left. Chippy Styles was in the middle, middle there. James Hunt, Don Weiss there at the Candy Case. You watch this money change hands for a cup or a plate there, you'll realize that uh, we did get a little of your money here in Teleco Plains, at least for the souvenirs. For the record, there were more than 6,000 visitors to the community center during the seven-day period we were open. And those visitors came from 58 Tennessee towns and 21 states. 58 Tennessee towns and 21 states. I don't believe we have ever in the past had that many people from that many different places in Teleco Plains at one time. We appreciate all of you who did come home. There's Billy Hall talking to Jim Thompson. Frank Gray walks across in front. Earl Tate, a local resident. There's the old gang together. Bill Gray, Burl Akins, Howard Lester. 
Norm Lou in the front, Chippy Styles in there. Kathleen Dalton doing the basket weaving. Uh, she and Ken uh, conduct classes and do this type of work on Coker Creek. And Heather Hovenagel uh, doing the spinning. For those you, of you who don't remember or haven't seen this, uh, what Heather is doing there is called carding. She is straightening out the uh, wool fiber um, by the use of those cards, to get it laying straight, or that she can start spinning it into thread. hanging on the wall there uh, to Heather's left or our right 
uh, was manufactured by the Shaws in Rafter uh, about the mid-1800s, where they raised the sheep, uh, sheared them, uh, carted the wool just as Heather was doing there, spun it as she is doing into a yarn or a thread. Then they wove it on a hand loom into cloth and uh, made the quilt. Uh, the dyes that they used were from native uh, berries, juices, walnut stain, and etc. Back at the grist mill, the grist mill was operated by Hubert O'Dell or Chubb O'Dell. And the Donnie and Gary Kirkland I spent a lot of time there with it. Uh, a lot of these exhibits you see back here, a lot of the tools uh, were cap prices. Cap stayed with this thing uh, practically day and night. That's an old gasoline uh, horse machine. Uh, the shoe shop here was operated by Charlie Long uh, throughout many years in Teleco. Uh, we called him Teddy Yinkton the old electric light plant that was in the Hambo home in 1926 when he moved there. Uh, we don't know how many years it had been there previous to 1926. Uh, as you can see here, uh, with a little coaxing, uh, it will run and uh, produce electricity for the lights. The reason that thing didn't fire off the first time it did the backfiring, I didn't have the ignition hooked up when I started to crank it. I reached down there to hook the ignition up, then it goes the opposite direction. Now it will run. This was a Delco plant that was used in the early 1900s. Had a huge string of batteries that would run a 32 volt string of lights. And you run this thing once or twice a day to uh, charge those batteries back up uh, where you could have electricity in the house. Most of the people who had them used them only for electricity, but there were uh, various appliances like vacuum cleaners and uh, things of that type uh, available that would work off that 32 volt. That's Ray McJunkin and Howard Lester, Tom Lester, Ed Davis. Ray McJunkins. You've seen this before in the old movies. Nemesu 
Lynn, the Masoom Byram Lynn, who uh, did so much uh, narrating for us. This exhibit was furnished by the State of Tennessee Department of Conservation. Local archaeologist Joe Benthal uh, prepared it.